Oftentimes when we go through quantum mechanics, we're stuck talking about things that the students cannot see. They have to almost take our word for it that we're, we're telling them the truth. Whether it's flame tests or orbitals and where the electrons are, there's an awful lot of abstract things going on as we talk about quantum mechanics. What we have here is a nice way of showing, connecting some of the theory with reality. What I have here would be uh, small pipettes. If I hold it this way, you might see a little bit better. Small pipettes with solid material in each end. And they're stuck on these little black elbows so that they form a, a large V. You see that I have a calcium salt in here, a zinc salt here, a copper salt down uh, at the lower left, and then a mag manganese salt on the lower right. Well, there are some interesting properties that these will show when subjected to a super strong neodymium type of magnet. But in order to understand what we hope to see, we want to take a closer look at the electron structure. So typically, as we teach electron structure, we would show some sort of an orbital chart here where we have the 1s, the 2s, the 2p, and so forth, increasing energy as we go up. The electrons that make the most impact on properties are those on the outermost end, what we call the valence electrons. And there, there's a little bit of uh, confusion that's possible as we talk about the neutral atoms being filled to a certain level and which electrons are being lost first. What we want to focus on with our students is getting to the heart of what do the elect what's the electron picture look like. And we're most interested in the highest energy level type of electrons. So now, with those uh, different elements set up over there, we want to come back over here to the board. And what we see in the, in the calcium ion example, what we see would be the 3p6 electron picture, where we have six electrons in the 3p series of orbitals. The big idea here, students would recognize, we have no unpaired electrons. Everything's partnered up. There are two electrons in each circle or each orbital. Over here, we see the zinc ion example. The zinc plus two ion has a full 3D, 3D10, as we would call it, because it has two electrons in each of the five D orbitals. Again, no unpaired electrons. Down here, we see, in the case of the copper plus two ion, we see a 3D9 electron configuration. And again, we would see two electrons, two electrons, two electrons, two electrons, and one unpaired electron. Again, students are comfortable with that, but why, does it, why is it the way it is? We'll talk about that. Here, the manganese plus two ion has a total of five electrons in its outermost uh, electron orbitals and we see a 3D5 electron configuration. And we spend a lot of time talking about how electrons being negatively charged naturally repel each other. They try to get as far away as possible. That is, if we make the electrons come to life and have feelings. But we see one electron in each of the respective orbitals. That means we have five unpaired electrons. So we have some of these have no unpaired electrons. The copper has one unpaired electron, and the manganese has five unpaired electrons. What I also like about this is the fact that here we don't have any d orbitals present, or they're unfilled. Here I do have a d orbital, or d orbitals, d orbitals, and d orbitals. But now let's go over and subject each of these to a very strong magnetic field. This is a super strong neodymium type of magnet. Very, very strong. It has to be 
the super strong neodymium magnet for this demonstration to work. And what I'm going to do with the calcium ion and its no unpaired electrons, see what happens when I take this super strong magnet next to it. There's no effect. Now let me go to the zinc plus two ion and see if we can get that to be subjected and move. Not moving, unaffected by a magnet. So in the first two examples, what we've seen with no unpaired electrons in the calcium ion or the zinc ion, no unpaired electrons, unaffected by a super strong magnet. Now we're going to go to the lower level, the copper plus two and the manganese plus two, and see what the effect is when we subject those to a super strong magnetic field. Starting with the copper ion with its one unpaired electron, we're able to see some slight deflection here. So there we go. Just a little, there we go. Definitely is moving, but not very strong. And that's with one unpaired electron. Now, with manganese, with its plus two charge, it has five unpaired electrons. Well, if no unpaired electrons have, are unaffected by the magnet, one unpaired electron is slightly affected by a magnet, now we're going to be able to hopefully see what happens when manganese is subjected to a strong magnetic field. This would be a time as a teacher where I'd say, make some predictions. Why do you think that? And you can see, I can pull this literally all the way around, twisting the rope up on top. Very, very affected. So the terminology that we use here, no unpaired electrons, the science word for that would be dia magnetic, okay? No unpaired electrons. Down here, these two examples are what we call paramagnetic. They have unpaired electrons in their respective orbitals. And with, with so many unpaired electrons in the manganese, it's no doubt or no question as to why or how, if we have to explain, why is this one so easily moved by a magnet whereas the copper is only weakly attracted. Okay. Again, it's easy in the quantum mechanical world, in our quantum unit, to become bogged down and, and really leave it at the abstract level of an orbital chart, but it's a nice example here of connecting the atomic world and where the electrons are with a macroscopic property such as being magnetic.